Anything else? Oh, don't forget the royal game of Ur. And the problem with this is there is no way that I can present this without sounding like a skeevy used car salesman with slick back hair going, Hey kids, I got a proposition for you. You want to make money selling 3D prints? You like dinosaurs? We got dinosaurs. We got two kinds of dinosaurs. Have you tried printer block? Oh, printer block. Really good for you. You should check this out. Uh, nothing can be done. Let's just own it. Here we go. Thinking back, I remember a time when talking about making money with 3D prints, I said I couldn't possibly tell you what to 3D print and make money with because it would ruin the market. And yet that's exactly what I'm going to say in this video. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But this does come from something that I get requested an awful lot. So clearly there's people who want this. When I started 3D printing almost <laughs> nine years ago next month, holy smoke, it's been forever. Well, when that first 3D printer, the Replicator 1 up here, was on its way, I made a list of models off Thingiverse that I was going to 3D print, and I never did. Because I won this 3D printer for designing things for 3D printing, and so I always had my own things that I wanted to 3D print. And in those early days, I paid for my own filament by selling the 3D prints of 3D models that I had created. These little TARDIS rings were just a great seller for a while. And yeah, it was my own original design that I was selling. But eventually I started YouTube and designing models and running a YouTube channel and selling 3D prints of the models. Well, it all just got to be too much and something had to go. So I stopped doing the selling of 3D prints and just, just did what I enjoyed, modeling and making videos teaching you guys how to do 3D printing. But people were contacting me about this time saying, well, hey, since you're not selling it, can I sell 3D prints of your models? And this was always a really difficult question to answer. See, I put a lot of time and effort into making these 3D print models, not just making them, but I test them to make sure that they work well. I, I designed them to work without supports and I have to iterate them sometimes several times to do it. I put a lot of time and effort into this and I don't want people to just take all that time and effort and then profit from it. I mean, at least not without giving me a cut of it, right? It took me a while to figure it out and decide what I thought would be fair and, and equitable to both sides. And here's what I've come up with. Back me on Patreon at the $5 level and you can sell whatever 3D print models that I've made that you want. Going all the way back to the Chess Hero Robot to print a block beast, which if you are watching this video in the first couple of days that it comes up, you've got just enough time to get in and get the print a block beasts at their lowest price that they'll ever be before the price goes up after the Kickstarter ends in uh, you better hurry. And I don't care whether you sell them on Etsy or, or Nico Industries or whatever the hotness is at the moment, or whether you set up a lemonade stand on the street. In fact, selling them locally might be a better option because you'll have less competition. You know, 3D print a bag of printer blocks, print out the instructions for them, and take them to your local farmer's market and set up a booth. You, you might be surprised what you can sell if you focus on a local market. Now, I mentioned that I've been making 3D print models for nine years now, but you might not be aware of all the cool 3D print models that I've made that you might be interested in providing to people. For instance, my first Kickstarter that really did well was for the Royal Game of Ur 3D printed. And I, I made this neat little board that collapses in on itself and provides a nice little place for you to take all the the chits and dice and stuff like that and put them in there and close it up so that it stores well. It's a it's a board, it's a box, it's everything you need to play the Royal Game of Ur. This was 
popular because of a video by Tom Scott. And I still, every once in a while, get somebody contacting me through the Kickstarter and saying, hey, are you still selling these? And my answer is no, but if you were selling them, my answer could be not me, but go talk to them. Another one based on a popular video that every once in a while somebody contacts me about, I made a carnival coin replica based on Ross's Game Dungeon video. And yeah, every once in a while somebody contacts me and says, hey, are you still selling those coins? Well, no, I'm not. But, you know, if you kept two or three of those around and had a listing that I could point people at... I could point them at it. I've also made a number of board game adjacent things, uh, like these little markers for Lords of Waterdeep or these little cute Cthulhu pawns. I created these cute Cthulhu pawns intentionally to replace generic pawns in board games so that you could liven up your game with some cute little pawns. And a while ago, I did try making some packaging for them and putting them out there, but... Yeah, they never sold well on Etsy, but I think at a local market, a little package like this would do very well, especially if you had some larger prints near it to show people what it was and the details of it. And of course, there's Chibi Malls, which uh, I love Chibi Malls, and I am definitely going to work in the future to make Chibi Malls a more worthwhile sell for you. I'm, I'm hoping to make Chibi Malls go viral, and in which case you being a reseller for Chibi Malls in your local area could be very profitable. That's uh, a pipe dream, but hey, maybe one day we'll get there. In the meanwhile, yeah, there's Chibi Malls, there's low poly dinos, and of course there is the ever-growing library of printer blocks. And these are the ones that I think would be most profitable, but quite frankly, I've got so many models on Thingiverse and My Mini Factory and Pin Shape that I've been uploading for so long that I, I've just never bothered to consolidate into one place because, come on, I got 3Ds to model here. I don't have time to be dealing with all the repositories, so go search through there. You might find a gem or two in there. Come to think of it, those dice that I made a while back. Hmm... Now, of course, packaging and, and selling them, in a sense, is something that you're going to think of. Like I said, for instance, you could, you could have your packaging here, even just a simple plastic bag, but you got to think, well, we need the instructions on here. But then also have a finished kit out where people can see it so they can see what they're potentially buying. That's just one idea, but, you know, if you want to figure out packaging or pricing, I really can't help you much. In this case, I just have to say you're the entrepreneur. Figure it out. Although, if you want some hints for packaging, I reached out to my buddy Josh, who does the Alien 3D monthly subscription box. This is absolutely great. It has fun little electronics, Arduino projects in it. It has more filament than you will ever be able to print with. And it's, it's really a great deal. And every month he makes these absolutely beautiful boxes. And I reached out to him and said, hey, where could people make boxes like this? And he gave me a list of resources that if you want to check out, just go down to the comment section and read the first pinned comment. It'll have a link to my blog post and I'll tell you all about what he said in that blog post. As far as pricing goes, well, at this point, now that I'm telling everybody about this, you might have some competition. So be aware of your competition, but at the same time, price yourself fairly. I want to tell you a little story. When I first started selling these TARDIS rings that I keep going back to in this video, I was selling them for, you know, two or three dollars a piece. I thought, you know, this is just like 20 cents of plastic. Well, it's closer to 50. Still, it wasn't much plastic. I had really minimized the size of it. So if I'm selling them for $3, that's practically pure profit for me. And then I had somebody buy like a whole bunch of these at 2 and $3 and took them to a fair and a convention and sold them for $10 a piece. And I went, oh... Chances are you're going to undersell at first, and so you should raise the price a little bit. But at the same time, don't raise the price too much or people won't want to buy it. you got to find the price that people are willing to pay and get that just as high as possible. And also keep in mind all of your expenses. How much is this much plastic going to cost you? How much is your time worth? And 
you know, you got to pay the guy who did the designing, right? I do want to say, though, whatever you choose to do, do your best at it. And that is to say, you want to do your best possible prints, print them at maybe a slightly better resolution than you would. Use as well a calibrated printer as you can. Get good cooling, use good material. Just put your best foot forward on this one because that's going to bring people back for more. Now, part of me wishes that I had more to tell you about packaging and selling and pricing, but that's all that I got. That's just not the stuff that I do anymore. Uh, but you know what? I'm doing the designing. You're doing the selling. Let's do some awesome stuff, partner. Okay, that was that was the slick back hair used car salesman. Hey, kids, let's sell some stuff. Slick Willie's here to help you. Oh my goodness, was that name a euphemism the whole time? Block mechs, which are currently, if you're watching this one, them within the 3D print a, a bag of printer blocks. I, just, I knew I was going to stumble on that one. Sample rolls of filament. You'll have. You'll. Mm, I'd love to help you more on this, but I really. Mm, moron. Let's try it again. I don't do that much. 